Kim Ringland. I started um, living down here off and on since about 2007. And we bought our property in 2006. Um, we bought seven acres up in Cayo, uh, up in the mountains, away from everything, uh, where we now grow most of what I make into tinctures is all grown on my property. I'm a botanical master herbalist. I pick almost everything that I use. So the plants and where they grow and how they're being grown and whether they're being sustainably harvested has a whole lot to do with my medicine. And so that's one of the things as a herbalist, you can use herbs anytime. They're online, you can buy them, but to not be sure what they are is the hard one. And mm -hmm. I've come across those coming from dry, reputable companies where it wasn't, it says what it's what I wanted, but it isn't what I want. It's somebody in the family that isn't what I'm using it for. Mm, okay. So um, I used to make a cancer remedy in Canada called Essiac. Mm -hmm. There's an herb in it that's very important called sheep sorrel. Mm -hmm. Um, I ordered it up through a very good company and ended up with something called Yellow Dock. Oh. Um, the only way to know the difference is seed size. So how, so you didn't know, is that how you could tell the difference? But it was sold as uh, it sheep was so, sorrel? It was sold as sheep sorrel. But it wasn't yeah. sheep sorrel. Oh, and the only okay. way I could tell the difference was because I pick sheep sorrel. Yeah, so you know what it looks And it doesn't have, and I pick Yellow yeah. Dock. So they're deceiving the customer on purpose? Yes. They're yeah. deceiving the customer because Yellow Dock yes. is a weed that grows in almost every kind of state and oh. grows to about this high, it's sometimes called Indian tobacco. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all use it for different things. Sheep sorrel is what we call red sorrel. It grows down inside of your grass hay where you didn't want it and mm. comes up like a little red mat. Mm. Okay. And it has tiny, 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 tiny seeds. And these were these big three-winged seeds. And I went, those are dock seeds. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. so here I was going to use it in something for cancer patients. I'm sorry. Yeah. I need exactly yeah. what I'm looking mm. for. Um, I can give you all sorts of gold standard herbs, gold standard herbs everybody can pick off mm -hmm. the shelf and use to its benefit. They basically are an adaptogen that stands on a fence and pulls you from whichever side you're weak. So adaptogens are, all they're going to do is bring you back to center. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, and that's their idea is to bring you back to center. Um, if you're really out of wow, you got to address what's out of wow. My blood sugar just spikes. Well, we maybe need to wash your blood out a little. Mm -hmm. Somebody's not working in the blood system to clean you out enough between the liver, pancreas, whoever else has to function through the blood, kidneys. You know, everybody, the blood goes everywhere. So I teach people when they're wanting to learn about healing is to look at a triangle of themselves. Put that triangle over your whatever you're trying to heal, here's my belly. Um, digestion includes my liver, my pancreas. I need to strengthen those three to make sure my digestion is working right. I need to chew my food and put it in my body right if I'm having wrong digestion. We pretty much combine carbs with proteins in this world. Mm -hmm. They don't digest together. That's so just why a, do they taste so good together? I know. <laughs> Cheeseburgers and french fries. Yes. Um, they just don't. It's basically, if you're a healthy person, it's going to go through you, and you're going to have a really good stool the next day, and that'll be it. But if you're an unhealthy person, then it bogs down in the middle because you needed the nutrition, and now it's trying to ruminate this gaseous mash that's now kind of like beer. Sugar. Dough. Mm -hmm. Nobody digesting. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, sick people can't do it. Healthy people can usually trash themselves a few times a year and come mm -hmm. out of it just fine. Yeah. You know? Um, I'm one of those people who can't drink. I can't drink. And anymore, I can't eat things that I'm allergic to. I just vomit right now. That's it. I'm over it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I have a sensitive liver. Always have. I was born with something that just makes my liver sensitive. So we just don't do those things to it anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't eat mangoes. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> it's a shame. It's so it is. It's a shame. <laughs>
but if you're allergic to it, you just don't need it, you know. Um, so I look at healing triangles. If it's your brain that's having trouble, you might want to look at how you're breathing. You might want to look at your spine. Your spine only goes two places. All these nerve endings either go to this brain or they go to this brain. And if the two aren't in sync, they don't work together. So if this isn't digesting food, this brain says, shut down. I'm not happy. We either get depressed, anxious, upset. Some people just go straight into mental health. Mm -hmm. And if you would address what they're eating, how they're eating it, maybe we could get them better. Ideal eating patterns go along with good health. You want to divide all carbs from all proteins. Period. Simplest way to look at it. And if you were taking all your proteins and adding two or three vegetables to them, vegetables digest with their great body. Um, all your carbs, you can eat all the carbs you want to eat, just add a bunch of veggies to them and some oil. They need oil to digest, either good butter or good oil. Carbohydrates need something to help them. Chewing your carbohydrates is extremely important because the peptides are what digest carbohydrates. They come from your mouth. And so if you chew your carbohydrates, you'll digest them better. Uh, on the other hand, you want to chew your proteins, but hydrochloric acid is what digests it, and it only comes from the pumps in your stomach. So proteins get down in your stomach, the digestive agents get added. Now, if they don't have peptides to, to neutralize the, the hydrochloric acid, how do you, you know, high acid stomach, how do you neutralize it? A little bit of baking soda. It'll take all the acid out of your stomach right this second. Now, if you're doing that three times a day, that's not good for you. You're going to get a sodium spike. But if I've just got an upset stomach tonight, a little bit of quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a little bit of water, or a club soda, pure club soda. But those are usually CO2 injected, so they're not as balancing as you would like to think. All pop is CO2 injected, not naturally fermented. So it it goes against the grain to have CO2, that much CO2 in the system. You know, I make my own ginger ale. That changed the whole thing. That's probiotics in a bottle. Tastes like a soda pop. Bubbles like a soda pop. In fact, sometimes you can't open the thing without a bowl underneath it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that's the goal. If you can learn to make the things that you so conveniently can buy, then you're going to be able to do more things. Um, medicine can be preserved in various ways. I brought several of my, my ways of doing it. It's either oil, alcohol, a, a tea that you break with alcohol, or essential oils. Do a great job of pres preservation. I use a lot of GSE. So grapefruit seed extract. Ten drops of grapefruit seed extract is as antibacterial as any antibacterial soap in a hospital. So you can add a little grapefruit seed extract to almost anything. You're going to wash your body, your hair. Grapefruit, grapefruit seed. seed. Grapefruit seed. Grapefruit is excellent for the skin, excellent for heart, but grapefruit seed is a bitter beyond bitter. My daughter uses it as a antibiotic by putting it in a cap, and then takes like three to five drops in a cap for infection. I have one daughter who's an aromatherapist, iridologist, Thai masseuse. Is that all of them? Certified teacher of Thai massage. <laughs> and then the other one is a natural science major. She just loves trees. And <laughs> Let's go take a walk. Everybody put on your hat. We'll go see what kind of herbs you got growing around here. I stopped in the lot between Scotia and whatever's next door to it. Uh, yeah. That is an Arkansas. herb pharmacy from heaven, mm -hmm. that lot. And you can find everything for your kidneys growing on the side of the road. Um, I was amazed because I wasn't sure what grows in Placentia, so I was 
having to go walking last night to figure out who's got what, where, when, why, and you're, you've got what we need. And just showing it to you will give you an idea. I'll pick a few of them that are in the 100 Herbs books, so they actually go with what has been written for our herbs around here. But we have Pissabed and Rabbit's Foot Vine and Chanca Piedra and all the ones that you're going to the store to buy from Neutrina is Chanca Piedra. It's good for liver, digestion, kidneys. You know, I'm like, wow, okay, well, they got tons of it here. <laughs> Did you see any China root? China root doesn't grow on the peninsula. Um, she needs mud, and there's too much sand. Uh, Desclareas as well, the white ch the white cocomeca, um, or white yam. She likes mud and uh, soil. But I did hear they grow as close as the highway. My worker is an herbalist as well, and he worked on the Placencia Road, so I was asking him, and he says it grows up by the highway. Now, if you need some, let us know. We grow a ton of it. We chop it and send it out dry. And, um, I just recently bought a tincture at the expo. So Aren't they wonderful? Yeah, really it's in my uh, balance. I make a tincture for menopause and different things like that. Foggy brain that's, got, uh, that's called balance, and it's got some of that. He takes a ton of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Does it work? Yeah, he likes what it really. does in babies anymore. It's the best team in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Heavily into desert herbs in Nevada. And then moved out of there to the Northwest. Pacific Northwest is one of those places where we have so many herbs. And got started there and then got trained a little bit by an Indian there. So Native American herbs became a real big study for me. I just love Native American pioneer herbs. They went together. The ones we used from here to here because we didn't have any doctors or medicine. You know? And then I'm a Dane on one side and Maya on the other with a little other stuff. And so the Danish side, my grandmother all, never took her kids to the doctor. Now, several of them became doctors, but she never took her children to the doctor, and we learned a lot of things about how to take care of ourselves. <laughs> you know, but I figure that's part of that Viking tradition. <laughs> the strongest will survive, right? <laughs> oh, they fell off the ship. Well, they'll either swim or not. <laughs> you know? Tough. All right, let's go for a little walk. I'll show you a few little herbs. One of the most important herbs to Maya is the red flower hibiscus. Because for a mama, Maya mama, this is what stops bleeding of the uterus. So if you're having a baby, you have a little bit more bleed than you want, you start making red flower tea and you just, a little bit of the tip, like you would any kind of tea, the fresh growth, is green tea. So then you would take that and the red flowers. These are called a hemostatic and they tighten the blood vessels. So it stops bleeding. Mm. And most of us don't have a clue. <laughs> you know? I thought croton was something, but it's not. And that's not a croton. That's a chenille or a ox boil. So what do you do? Just boil it? You boil it. And you would just come along just like they want it tipped anyways. And you just pick the tips about like this. It makes a great black tea. So for some the person that Do you dry it out or yeah, just... Yeah, I dry it sometimes, but like this, it's going to come out green, mm -hmm. just like green tea. And um, you would just, this is what, in the Camille plant, this is what we call white tea. And you would just go to put it in the pot of water. Right. And then in, um, as soon as you roll it for 24 hours and make it into green tea, then it dries just green and you don't let it ferment. You dry it in a heat dryer. Um, and if you want black tea, you have to let it ferment for, I think, three days or five days or something like that until it turns black. And then you dry it. You know, and you can't make kombucha without black tea. That's right. The so you can together. use uh, the hibiscus for... Uh, you can use the hibiscus kombucha. for the green tea part. I do oh. a, my kombucha with black tea and green tea in it. But you have to have black tea. It likes that. Have you that. done gin? Uh, which one? Gin? Uh-uh. It's uh, green tea with honey instead of black tea and sugar. Oh, yeah. Same scoby, same Yeah, same scoby. I haven't done it. Huh? I don't do much honey anymore. I got kind of grossed out on honey once. 
don't do much honey anymore. <laughs> Medicinally, I make syrups out of it if I have to. But I hardly eat it anymore. So there it is. I'm, I, out of, I don't have any oral allergies anymore, though. So that's one of the reasons I used to eat honey was for my allergies. Mm -hmm. And the allergies are gone. And I'm like, this is cool. Now that helped. I did a protocol of nettle every day. Nettle tincture can kill allergies. But you've got to do it every day. These are tiny because they're... Oh, I see that all over. They've been butched down. But Chanca Piedra has these little balls on the bottom of it. And Chanca Piedra is all over the world now considered the kidney cure for stones. Are those the ones that you touch them and they close, nope. no? Okay. No. She won't close up. That sensitivity plant. I love that plant. Is That's good for pain. Sensitivity plant is good for sleep and pain. Say it's a sedative and it puts you to sleep. I know. And I then, stuff. but they grow all over the place. But the way you know if you pull the seas is when you pull that off, it's going to bleed white. Mm -hmm. And you phobosias have a white latex that if you had leishmaniasis or a really bad bug bite that you weren't sure of, you would coat it with that latex and it would burn like hell. But it would kill the little parasite that lives under the skin. That is the cure locally for leishmaniasis. You take is that like scabies? No, leishmaniasis is a, a protozoa styled of one cell amoeba that gets injected into you by a mosquito that, that bit a bush rat. They both like have to be female, by the way. So this is super prevalent. We need to know. The people in Belize have a lot of leishmaniasis, and it becomes it becomes. Um, that's the one that later on they grow out of you, right? Um, that's bot fly, and this will work on bot too. Yes, it would kill bot. But leishmaniasis, I got it on the back of one arm at my farm. And um, he said, you must be the luckiest person in the world. I said, I do not gamble. There's no reason for me to lose that much money. And he said, yeah, you got leishmaniasis. And I, we had to do injections of antimony for 28 days twice to get rid of it all. It's like having a rat in the castle kitchen living under this, the stove. It's a one cell amoeba that enters the mitochondria of the cell, which is supposed to be the part that kills it. And it lives inside the mitochondria and doesn't ever die. And so what you have to do is you have to just completely annihilate and raise the castle. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, like, if you have like a weird bug bite, you're not sure what it was, can you apply it to yes. any bug bite? It you could, but it'll make, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to because it's going to leave a scar. Uh, the way a burn leaves a scar, it's going to leave a okay. scar. Okay, I have other safe. things I use for that, like uh -huh. um, jackass bitters. Any bug bite I get. So jackass bitters is safer. It's not oh, jackass safer. bitters and alcohol is I put on the first of any bug bite juice anywhere in the world. <laughs> or my one wound wonder. I make one that has jackass bitters in it, but also has colloidal silver and rose water. And that one's just, we call it wound wonder because, oh, what do you have? A wound? Okay, here, put this on. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then we have a greasy one for when it needs to be covered up and kept clean. But um, that's one of the biggest things to watch in this country is wounds. Mm -hmm. We are high fungus because of moisture. Perfect. And so we have to either wash our skin with an antifungal or an antibacterial. Baking soda works great. It kills all bacteria on skin. Worms that the kids get on the top of their foot. It's like a skinny little line. They are a thread worm and they're because they go barefoot. Yeah. They come up through the bottoms of their feet. And the nurse would like poke that with the needle and put and then, lime on it. Yeah. It kills it. The lime kills them. And lime on a bug bite. Local cure. They lime everything. Your dog gets cane, ju the cane frog. But with the lime, it's always like, it's like you put it on the skin and then it's sun exposed and it leaves like this white. Uh, it will, it, it bleaches. Will, it bleaches, but it will, it's like, um, it's not permanent. It's no, it'll go away. Later. It'll go away. At but least it'll go away. Later. How much? You can take it. Yeah, yeah. So this is just what you find right out the door here, and you've got a lot of that kind of stuff out here. A lot of spurge, and then Chanca Piedra coming up everywhere. It absolutely loves wastelands. But most strong and powerful herbs come up in places that are just wasted. 
It just, they're what recover it. And they're the most powerful herbs in the world, but they'll come up like, I used to have to spray the glyphosate on people's fences because I was a landscaper. You know, I was on the The first thing to come back was the anti-cancer herb that I put into the Canadian remedy. It's just cleaning the soil. I'm just cleaning the soil. You know? <laughs> and it's amazing, you know? Um, of course, you don't take those herbs from those areas that have been poisoned. You try not to, you know, and you try to find places where it's more just sand that they like. I find most of my chanka trees are in Santa Elena growing in a crack before the ditch. And that's where it likes to grow, you know. And that side they've put in a whole lot of grass or it's grown, which is awesome. Grass doesn't always grow. And I think that's pretty much with the exception of the mammon. This is a high blood pressure cure. This is the Hammond tree, the Indian almond. And a leaf of this in tea once a day can almost cure high blood pressure. And so this is one of those trees that everybody grew in their yard but has no idea why they put it there. They thought it was just for shade. shade. But the, 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 this tree is incredible. And then, of course, it puts out the almonds. Let's go. So you can only do what your client wants, but you can see how much tank of pH is coming up right here. The little light green guys, all medicine. All kidney medicine. Corner of the earth. It's just a different mistletoe. Just so we don't like this. It's a mistletoe. It's a parasite that'll kill the bush. Yeah, and, and they're parasites that kill bushes. And they have no It looks the flower looks like a like a lobelia. Oh, right. This, it's got a sticky nicotine feel. Fisherman's tobacco. And what do you use it for? Well, I guess the fisherman used it as a tobacco. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Um, I've only just got it identified that far last year when it was It's just, all over you know, place. something different. You know, but uh, it, I would have to ask the Creoles locally what they used it for. Mm -hmm. But apparently, it grows on all islands. I'll ring the flowers. One seed, it'll make water taste like you put four tablespoons of sugar in it. Really? This is a cure for early diabetics. They eat the seed. Okay. Um, yeah. And I mean water tastes like sugar. And you're like... It also... And that's where they get the... Um, I like to take and put about anywhere from a quarter to half of it full of herbs. So dry, green, whichever way you're using them, I just stuff them in that jar and I mash them down until it's about half full of herbs. Uh, I don't mash them anymore. I basically just put them in and know that I'm about half full. But if you need to check it out, you just keep mashing it to your, where you want to be. Then you add to that either an 85 proof vodka or I like to get a little bit more out of my herbs, so I add a little bit of a higher proof vodka, uh, anything higher proof. Mm -hmm. The higher the proof, the more medicine comes out of the herb. And then you just let that sit for 20 something days. If I think that it needs a little solar to get it kicked up, I do that mostly with oils, but sometimes I'll take a tincture and sit it in the sun. That for 20 adds days. UV. Yeah, for not the 20 days necessarily, but sometimes I'll just put it out in the sun for the day. And it's going to add a UV factor. I mean, we can sterilize water with UV, so it must be good for something, you know. And so I'll let the sun do a little work on it. And it sort of heats it up and cooks it a little, you know. But uh, most of the time I'm just soaking my tinctures in, in the alcohol for about 20 days, 14 to 20 days, at which time I strain them off the herbs. And then I add, if it's this full in the bottle of alcohol, I add that much more water, especially if it's 85 proof. Mm -hmm. That breaks it to 25% alcohol. It's about 40 proof then. 
And that's we're right around 25% alcohol. That's why schnapps can be taken and drunk just as a sipper because they're only 40%. You know, they're a sweet little something to sip on. Um, 40% is a good place to take medicine because people like to be quick about their medicine and a lot of times they'll put it under their tongue and then drink something with it. That's great at 40%. It's not good even at 50%. Uh, 40, 40 proof is 22%. 50% alcohol is where I usually, like I, my marijuana tinctures all are at that level and they will burn the skin right off of your the inside of your mouth. So if you've got people that like to self-medicate the way they like to self-medicate and won't follow instructions, they're not the people to give that kind of medicine to. You want to add that to something. You've like got to put it in something. Water, juice, put it on a piece water, of toast. Juice, Let some of the alcohol burn off. You know, then all the oil and the resin in that alcohol stick to the toast. And that's what we find when we try to break a marijuana tincture is it's a resin that we're breaking and as soon as you have the water, the resin separates. And now you've got it sticking to the inside of a jar, you got it stick, but it's not in the suspension that you're trying to get it into the people. So um, I've had to go figure that one out on my own, but I just can't put stuff in it. Like Amy said, they tell you that with glycerin, vegetable glycerin, you can cook it at 80 degrees centigrade for five minutes and then it will bind to the resin and then it won't separate anymore you know but rather than do all that I just try to teach people to be smart mm -hmm. now I only taught you about tinctures blends are different anytime you're blending herbs you want to blend herbs to the benefit of the blend and I use a principle that the Chinese came up with that has five herbs for almost every blend you've heard of their five ancient the famous five spice mm -hmm comes from the same principle. I formulate under this kind of a formula. I have to keep it going because I don't think I have it set up to stay on. You have a king herb. Your king herb would be like, and what we looked at today would be your pisabed. We're trying to cure kidney infection. Your king herb is going to be pisabed. It's the strongest one designed for nothing but urinary tract. That's what it likes. But every king needs an assistant. Otherwise, the notes don't get taken to the whoever. And so on the assistant on that one, you see, we saw, I would probably put Sorcy in there. Something that detoxes the kidneys as well. And so it would be the, a little bit more of the king, a little less of the assistant. The queen, she's going to be a little less than the king in the herb thing. But you're going to go for something, again, that addresses kidney, the kidneys. And so you're going to want to go to, like, your rabbit's paw or your chanca piedra, even better. Put the chanca piedra in queen. Now you're going to put almost as much as your king or because they're equal. Mm -hmm. And she always had a servant. Mm -hmm. She never put her clothes on without the servant. And so I would put Sorcy there. Or not Sorcy, what was the other one? Um, um, the rabbit's paw. Rabbit's paw is a little more detoxifying and comes up as a liver condition blender. So rabbit's paw is good for that. So it would be down here and serve it. And then every formula under the sun needs a slave. You don't get the trash out of the castle if you don't have a slave. And that just brings the rats in. So once you start detoxifying a system, you've got it going through your system. If you don't give yourself something to get it through here, then that's not so good for you. Gumbo Limbo would have been a good one. Damiana would have been a good one. Um, they all relax the system and cause it to kind of cleanse. The other Senna that we saw with the little seed pods, I called it Fertilia. That would have been another good one, especially if it's urinary tract infection. But if you don't have anything else, add something that's slippery. Aloe vera, nopal, um, any of those cacti style foods are going to go through the system and just wash it clean. 
and that's what you're going to want in the end. You're going to want a clean system, not one that still could use a little work on the filters. For um, tincture, it would be a half a cup of the king and queen. Okay. And this would be dry herb. Uh -huh. um, a quarter cup of the assistant and um, servant. And then I would add at least a quarter cup of the slave if I didn't have two slaves in it. Okay. Works always easier if you've got a couple people working together. So I sometimes add an extra slave to a, an ingredient. I have a lot of a herb called uh, Golandrina at my house. And Golandrina is a catalyst for every formula. So a lot of times I just add Golandrina to it, <coughs> you know, as another one to help clean things out. But that's my basic formulations. And my class just learns that we talk about our, if we're doing respiratory tract, we're going to do a T for the respiratory tract using that formulation. And um, so we leave the class with a piece of paper that tells them exactly which herbs are going where and what the purpose was for them. And now here's your, and then they put it in a notebook that says, oh, digestive system, mm -hmm. yeah. respiratory tract. Yeah. Oh, wow. Practical herbalism. Yeah. You know, you, need, you don't always need to look up the herbs, but you need practical herbalism. I, when I start studying for a problem, it's two or three days of the house being a complete wreck and all my books are open. Plus, I'm on Google all the time. I'm on Google trying to fix everything all the time. He knows he can get a good scratch.